Yeah. Okay. Welcome to this the Cowet Circus show. This is Dan Cowet. Welcome to be here, and uh, we're gonna have a great time. I uh, just want to know how are you doing, guys. Who wants to start? I, I, I can go. I'll go. Um, I'm Max. Um, I've been doing well. I just finished up my first semester of my senior year, so looking forward to having a break for like a month. <laughs> Oh, nice. And that's good, Max. And I just you had your last exam today, all right? Uh, yesterday, yeah. Yesterday, that's right. But, so, all, all squared away. So, I'm pretty happy about that. Stressful. Good. That's awesome. So, I, I'll talk with Zoe. How's Zoe doing? And uh, you're in Montana. <laughs> I'm a, I know you got there. They <laughs> like basically nothing. Um, so, yeah. Zoe, I am calling in from the beautiful state of Montana. Um, it's getting dark at 3.30 p.m. here right now um, and gets light at like 8.30 or 9 o'clock. So I'm oh, wow. that sucks. the sunshine times when I can uh, during the workday, which is pretty limited um, as we're in the midst of hiring our team for the summer. Um, but looking forward to um, getting outside in the moments I can. That's nice. That's awesome, man. You want Xavier, you want to say something? Yeah. So how are you? How are you doing, man? You want a few stories? Do you want to talk about school or something? No, I want to talk about hockey. Yeah, yeah go ahead. We got uh, something I got a new stick in my other stick. Um, It's like crack. So hard, but I haven't broken it yet. Oh, really? Oh, it's crazy. <laughs> oh my gosh! And then the that... Penguins beat the Montreal Canadiens in the <laughs> shootout. We're, we're still on uh, yes, introduction. Well, I'm Xavier Cowet. I like hockey and soccer. That's okay. awesome. That's pretty good. So, Lynn, Lynn, how was your party tonight? It was a good party. I'm disappointed I had to leave early. We were playing a uh, single bingo. It was and, fun. And did you win? No, I didn't win. <laughs> Maybe my card won after I left. Well, let, let's just say so you know I'm a losing streak. I've been gambling on DraftKings. I lost last night. I'm losing again today. Dude, um, you've been on Toronto, so right? I've got Toronto and they lose. I'm not in Columbus. Dude. I'm fucked. <laughs> but I'm still up. Listen, I I started with fifty dollars and I'm up. I was up almost three hundred, so I'm be about two hundred right now. So I'm gonna have to uh, sit down and do a, my fix my. Yeah. Uh, I can go back up. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so uh, what we want to talk about today, uh, Lynn? Yeah, we didn't talk about Lynn. Anything you want to talk about besides the. Uh, your day or work and stuff like that? No. No? Good. <laughs> I just want to ask. By me, I'm, I'm laid off, so I got time to talk about anything, right? So I've been uh, doing all kinds of stuff at home, and plus they're doing our roof today and tomorrow at our house, so it's pretty cool. And uh, um, what I want to talk about is uh, talk about our history of hockey, or that, what we did our life and all like my dad play hockey and where we are now. So like Xavier is 10 years old and like, Oh, I got company now. I got Xavier, <laughs> but you know, it's funny. If you guys didn't know, my dad did go to boarding school, play hockey and played uh, with Gila Far. Yeah. He did try out for the junior rampart with my dad. My dad, they try out the, the rampart and Gila Far was try. I don't do that. It's not just like stick handle when we talking but just to tell you that you the try out there he didn't make the team obviously but he has been playing hockey and it went from him to me and my mom played the uh, broom ball if you know what broom ball is it's not hockey but it's similar so i'm saying that you know i like i said i played the uh, i played the youth hockey in tetford mines quebec and stuff like that and i enjoyed it a lot and obviously I'd, my father passed away he was young but i had the uh, family you know the um, Hockey family were talked about, and Max knows that Zoe. You know, hockey are close. The people are hard together, are close together. It's very important, and uh, that's what helped me because 
They're the one who pick me up at home, bring me to a practice or games, travel on the bus. Parents, parents were taking care of me because my mom was working at the time. So pretty cool. And all I made it. I go pretty far, but I might play junior in college and stuff like that. And now I moved to Connecticut and met Lynn. And Linda played hockey. She's just, but she's a sport girl. She likes sports and stuff like that. So we start go watch hockey and stuff like that. And after that, Zoe was born. And Max and you guys, uh, well, Zoe, we we did introduce Zoe to hockey, right? Yeah. Zoe, I have a question did, for Mom when you have a moment. Go ahead, Mom. I'd love to hear how um, Dad proposed to you ah. <laughs> well we'll start with my hockey career because i did not play hockey as a youth but i was a figure skater and dad shames that so yeah <laughs> figure skaters that's still a sport let's be very clear okay yeah at some point though i did kick off my figure skates and put on hockey skates so but that was the, a lot of fun. So we did figure skating. Max did figure skating. Xavier did figure skating, right? But not with figure skates. Correct. Correct. So, so we, it, it wasn't really figure skating at that point. It was really just like power. Learned, yeah, correct. It's just You're like right. another look at how to skate. It wasn't yeah. really like as soon as we started, they wanted us to start doing jumps and stuff was when I got pulled out. <laughs> it's true. I'm a it's big true. boy. I can't be bouncing around the ice like that. Yeah. True. That, it is true. <laughs> so, yeah, getting, so, getting back to Zoe's question. So, your Dan, your father, played men's league hockey in South Windsor Arena. The same actually rank where his father played men's league hockey, maybe yep. thirty years before that. It's pretty neat that we actually have a picture of him at the same rank. But back then, there were no boards. It was um, they didn't have glass or plastic or boards. They had fence, right? Yes, correct. That's so. So wonderful. anyway, in the nineties. Yeah, no, when his dad played. No, no dad played. Played. oh, oh, oh like, hey, no. we're not that old. <laughs> That's a story. I'll start to his arena. <laughs> so it was. I think it was a Sunday night. It was a late game. I was there watching Dad play. Uh, he was a goalie back then, and and was for many many years. Watching his game, there was like two other people in the stands with me, and then. Um, I don't know if it was after the first period or the second period. He called me down to the ice and I'm like, well, like, what does he need? So I ran out of the stands down to the door uh, that goes onto the ice and he's there waiting for me. And he pops out a ring from his jock strap <laughs> <laughs> and asks me to marry him. And I barely have time to respond because the ref is blowing the whistle. It's time for the game to start back up. So I'm kind of left there like, what the hell just happened? The door closes, the game goes on. And I'm like, I walk back up into the stand with these two strangers. And I'm like, oh my God, he just asked me to marry him. Like that was off the wall, totally unexpected. Um. And Dan, I'll turn it over to you to talk talk about it from your point of view. Yeah, that was that was fun because I had the, the ring with me, and well, actually, I gave it to one of the guy on the bench. I said, "Keep it on." I, I, when he left, he said, "There we go." And so I I took it honestly. I put it in my jock strap. I played a period with it, and, the, and after the first, because I did that after the second period, and I said, "I, I listen. You don't have much time, you know. Beer league. You don't have uh, much time to." You just go to for thirty seconds and they whistle and go back to play, you know. So I you actually get out. Couldn't wait you. like an extra half hour. Well, I'm I not, what in your right mind made you think that was an appropriate time to propose to somebody? That's what I'm saying, dude. <laughs> just to be serious. I thought we've never cool. talked about it this way before. <laughs> but know. since you want your family to 
to the podcast. We need real answers. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing is, and those messed up too. Two things. I I went. I told. I talked to uh, Lynn's mom. I said, just so you know, I'm gonna ask Lynn to marry me. But me, I I didn't know like you're supposed to go to the father to ask. Nobody knew. Nobody knew. I'm the only yeah. one. Nobody knew besides me and my- everybody knew you were supposed to ask the father. You're the one that didn't know you're supposed to ask. Yeah, the father. yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. But man, mess, I told you Lynn's mom, and that's it. I, I, and she's the only one you knew. And I don't think she told Andre, but uh, whatever. But yeah, that's I, don't know, I wanted to do it the hockey rink. But I didn't know when I wanted to do it, but I said I want to do it during the game, stuff like that. So. But it's funny because after that, like, mommy went back up. She told her guys, "Yeah, that, like you said, he has, married, he asked me to marry him." But yeah, like we didn't have time to like talk much, and I had to jump back on the ice and <laughs> play hockey. But every time I go there, and that's nice. Every time I, when I go to the rink, I think about that, my dad, and think about when I asked him to marry me over there, and I think it's special because you no know, hockey's been part of our life. For the, all of us, and um, we uh, share a lot of stuff in hockey, you know. So that was interesting. I think I, I, if I had to do it again, I would do the same thing. Maybe change a few things, but I will do the same thing at the hockey rink. Maybe change a little, make it more. Uh, Can you wait till after the game. I could <laughs> that you can actually share the moment together instead of just like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, would you marry me? All right. Gotta go. <laughs> Gotta go. I'm gonna the- hop in the pipes and make some saves over here. <laughs> exactly. but yeah, you're, I agree with that. Maybe I should. Maybe in when it's thirty years, I'll do something different. It should have been a sign for me. <laughs> <laughs> cut, cut them loose. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was a great question, Zoe. That's uh, always uh, cool to. Uh, about that. Oh, Xavier has a question. Go ahead, Xavier. How old were you? How old were we when we got married? No, how old were you when you did that? I was about, I was 20, well, we got married a year and a half after, I think, right? Yeah, I was like, I was. Got, we got married, I was about, 20, I'm 54, so 28, so I was like 22, 20, I was 20, I met Lena. I was 23 years old. So, yeah, 23. No, I was, I was 22. You are 22? When you met me, right? So I was 23. Cause you're two years older than me. How does that math work? Yeah, 24, 24. So I was 24, Xavier. So, uh, yeah. He yeah, was yeah, so- younger than you are today, Zoe. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I'm not cr- much older than Max. I'm still good though. But that, that's right. funny. That's the year at 22. Is that the age I moved to the United States? 22. Yeah, I was 22 years old. But yeah, so we talk about stuff about hockey. That's what I was talking about. But like my like mommy played, but she played after the well, Zoe or Max. But Max, you want to talk a little bit about your? Why would you start with Zoe, the oldest? Zoe, go ahead. She's the oldest. Yeah. I would like to start for Zoe, actually. Yeah, sure. go ahead. So Zoe started playing hockey. She was probably, well, she was younger. And then decided that it wasn't for her, which was totally fine. And uh, she went on to do other things. And then Max, who was four years younger, started playing. She started going to the games and then decided when she was 10, 10 and a half that she wanted to play hockey. And we, we all know the sport of hockey. You can't start when you're this guy's age. If you're going to be successful, you're playing when you're young. So we're like, oh, wow, she's got a lot of making up to do now. She's behind. So Dan said to her, yes, you can play hockey under one condition that you're a goalie because I can help train you one-on-one, at home, on the ice, and get you up to speed to where you need to be. So, Zoe, you can take over your story from when you were 10. Yeah. Be nice now, huh? 
<laughs> oh, are we gonna dig into that? <laughs> well, I have a good one to say that it's very recent, but go ahead, Zoe. Oh, I would just love for everyone to take a moment to think about what being successful in hockey truly means to them. Like, does it mean that you are, you know, going out there and having fun with your friends? Is that what level of success means? Is it you're playing collegiate level D1 school, like super intense, like that's like all of your time is being committed to hockey? Like just taking a moment to think about success in what lens you see it as so a 10 year old coming into hockey uh thinking about how i needed to be successful well for my family at that point success meant like being good and getting further in the sport correct yeah like yeah. Yeah. some the goal well, you want. being able to be competitive right correct yeah i think it's more like that um yeah and I was really fortunate to have dad to be my coach and take me on under his wing it was uh-huh. <laughs> <So> yes <laughs> <laughs> it was not always perfect for sure no I mean it was many like many days waking up at 6 a.m as a 10 year old like and going to play hockey it was a lot of potential rejections from teams yeah. uh, to practice with because maybe I wasn't good enough or didn't really like prove and earn my spot on the team. Um, but I played for, you know, a year or so and then started playing a little bit. Of, I, I played a year in boys hockey eventually. And then um started trying out for more girls teams uh team connecticut and such did not make the team until one person got one of the goalies got injured um and then i had an opportunity to step up and start playing um in girls as well so the rest of middle school i was able to play boys hockey and that really was helpful um as a goalie because uh contact really kind of starts I mean, around that time. Um, so I, being a goalie, I was able to eliminate that factor and just focus on playing hockey locally and seeing if that was a sport that I wanted to continue with. Um, I don't really know how it happened, when it happened, but continued playing like girls at the same time, like Team Connecticut stuff, going to like started to be invited to like new england hockey camps for top players um making a bit more of a commitment to play in the summertime um and starting to play maybe for a girls team as well late middle school um and then comes time to go off to high school um and i i don't know how this decision really ended up being made but ended up going to play um, at a boarding school, similar dad said that his father did. Well, I guess I followed in that footsteps, those footsteps. <laughs> yeah. um, and um, I played at Choate for two years and um, then transferred to Northfield Mount Hermon. It was a much better fit for me as a school. Uh, there was like a farm on campus and it was pretty low key a lot of folks that were on financial aid which i was coming from south windsor still you know middle class just not uh loaded i would say <laughs> yeah so at that point um i was eating breathing and living hockey 24 7 uh whether it was during the school year um during the off season or during the summer. Uh, I feel like my life kind of revolved around what it is I was doing on the ice. Um, yeah. And then um, when I was 18, graduated from high school from NMH, um, 
intending on going to play at Trinity College D3 school. Um, I that summer in between uh, freshman year, my my uh, senior year and freshman year, I went on a cross country road trip with Alex Sue, right. my friend, and it kind of like changed my entire outlook on really my priorities, my life, what I wanted, what my goals were. I would say I didn't really have it. I knew uh, up until that point, my direction was hockey. Like what I wanted from college was to play hockey, but I didn't know what it is, what I wanted to like study in school (laughs) and like long-term career wise, it matters a lot more what you want to study than what you, what sports you want to play unless that will. Mm -hmm. Well, not just that, but hockey becomes part of your identity. And it gets really hard to separate yourself from that. Exactly. I I had no, like, I didn't have an identity outside of hockey. Okay, yeah. Like, Frank, I I identified myself as a hockey player and found that everyone around me also was, like, when people would ask me how I was doing, it was immediately, how is hockey going? Yeah. And I started to realize that, like, I didn't see myself as more than a hockey player at that point. Mm -hmm. And, like, what is there? Well, I went out west for the first time, and I see, see, I was about to swear, but I probably shouldn't. I (laughs) fucking mountains. (laughs) (laughs) It just made me realize, like, how small I am in the scheme of the world and, like, how much beauty there is to go out and chase after and um kind of just like maybe like midlife crisis at 18 (laughs) (laughs) so kind of always knew I wanted to come back and honestly it was Glacier National Park that caught my eye like I always knew for some reason Alex Sue and I accidentally did this like 12 mile hike when we had planned on four miles and we I got to the top of that pass and it opened my eyes to like the landscape around me, you know, the beautiful valleys below. And I, I knew that Glacier would be an incredible place to teach people about the natural world. I didn't know how I was going to do that, what kind of path it would take me on, especially because the school I was enrolled in, I'm going to go play hockey at like it. um, There was, no environmental program there yeah so i didn't know like how feasible that would be how do you become a park ranger how do you become an outdoor educator i didn't know Uh, none of my family uh, i wouldn't say we're very outdoor people (laughs) um i was lucky enough to have a little patch of woods in the backyard but came back to connecticut um and was going to trinity college played a year there and I feel like you know I did try I was one of two goalies on the team that year but I never felt truly connected to the people around me to the place around me and uh, maybe I kind of knew deep down that it wasn't the path for me anymore and because yeah. I was finding this other path for myself um so after I after that freshman year, it was a really hard transition for me to walk away from hockey. It kind of rocked my world for a little bit. Ended up um, dealing with some pretty severe mental health struggles during that time. Took some time off from school. I transferred to the University of Vermont. It opened my eyes to the love of the outdoors again, which like I was pretty outdoorsy as a kid, I would say. Yeah, and going, you still still play hockey there, as are we? At UVM? Yeah. Yeah, so at the University of Vermont, I did play club hockey in the beginning. Yeah, so you did the right thing, you know? Yeah, so I did play club hockey in the beginning, and then eventually I moved into my own rental and just kind of yeah. needed to start paying for rent and my bills. Yeah. So, like, it was a personal choice to take a step back from it. Um, but... I want to get to, you know, there's great stuff out of this story as well. Um, I definitely, I had no idea who I was after college, went through some pretty rough shit from leaving hockey and 
it's a really political world. I think that I was shed a lot of light on that for my family right. and Matt hopefully able to stay out of that a little bit more. I don't know if that worked. Um, but now I obviously live in Montana. Um, I've been very lucky to be able to rebuild my relationship with the game. Um, I moved out here three years ago or like two and a half years ago. So it's my third winter here. And my first winter here, I met somebody through um, a friend of mine who just played hockey here. And I was like, what? Yeah. Hockey? Uh -huh. <laughs> I had no idea what to expect. I think I even remember asking Max, like, what level should I apply? Like, I don't even know what level I will be in. Um, so I went and watched a game. I watched a women's game, I think. And I was like, okay, like, I'll... I'll sign up to play in C league and in women's league. And um, it was a really like, first off I dived head first back into hockey. Two nights a week is a lot as a goal. Yeah. Didn't we have to ship you your equipment? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't forget that. <laughs> it was only $500. <laughs> <laughs> but it's remember, still that's right of equipment um so i started playing hockey here in whitefish and the community opened like they welcomed me with open arms is the way i will put it um feel very fortunate to rebuild my love for the game in a low pressure setting um yep. i did like since uh playing in whitefish i've I moved up to B League and um, have been playing for pretty specific, like high level women's tournaments and men's tournaments as well. Um, so, yeah, it's been a really incredible journey. I'm actually surprisingly full circle. Um, I'm going to start skating out now uh, and taking a break from goalie to um, eliminate some of that you know, mental pressure that you put on yourself as a goaltender, which I would not change it for the world. I love being a goalie yeah. and I'm very excited to think about the game in a different way. Good. Well, and it's nice to hear you have the passion for the sport again. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great sport, you know, and I know <laughs> that you've got a lot of pressure maybe and stuff like that. And but it's not just about the game. It's about life. And those I talked with Xavier And I, I talk, he said, you always say hockey. I said, well, well, it's not just about hockey. It's about learning. It's a life experience. A lot of stuff in hockey can going to help you in life. That's what I'm saying. So that's yeah. why it's, it's, it's very nice to know that you hear that when you went through the way, you know, everybody's got ups and downs. And so, but yeah, it's very, what you said is very nice, but we'll give a chance to ask because uh, we've got like, uh, like eight minutes left. So I might go max and, uh, Talk about uh, when you start playing, when you start skating, like, uh, in, uh, or do you love the game? I I honestly don't really remember, like, the, the start or what well, you, how I, old I was or anything like that. I can, I can help you a little bit because when we start, I remember I, I was not involved in hockey at all, and I brought you to the Learn to Skate from South Windsor. You taught, uh, learned to play, and you jumped on the ice, and you, you were – crying the whole time on the ice so i had a guy so you were singing in the corner blah 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 so i i took you off the ice i said well you're not gonna learn how to skate here so where where did you learn how to skate max i do remember that it was so like, where pond at the campground that yes like that's where you learn how to skate and uh, i remember we were going the ice and i was trying to hold your hand i said no i got it dad i got it dad you're like three not even three years old And you're skating by yourself. And you want to do that by yourself. You didn't want me to hold your hand. So after that, I was able to go back. I went on the ice and I saw coaching. And now you came on the ice and you start playing as a player. You play like, if I recall, you play a couple of years. You play a player, but you're alternating in the net too. And at that age, young age, might you were a full-time goalie at might uh, at your last year. My you're last 80, I was 80 full time goalie. Yeah. 80, oh. And 
you won the state tournament against Mid Fairfield. Oh yeah. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Xavier. Yeah. I'll say though, it was the 2002 team. Yeah. Was yeah. Younger, one year younger than our. Yeah, um, but the old team was. Good. Good. The old team was good. Our team was like we like like three or four kids were good, and after that it was like, but we had the best goalie in the in the league. And Matt. the best goal scorer in the league. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Tim so. O'Connor. <laughs> little name drop. But yeah. Now you can, now you can keep going, Max. But yeah, and then from there, I, I did I did one year of squirts at South Windsor. And then yeah. I went. I, I'm not entirely sure the entire story because I wasn't involved in that kind of yeah. stuff. But Mr. Uh, Gear, uh, Eric Sunquist reached out to you and yeah. said, you're trying to put together a team. So. Yeah. That we, I became a part of the Connecticut Junior Wolf Pack program, which I believe now is Elite Hockey Academy, unless they change. Now, yeah, it's still the Wolf Pack is still there, but it's not as good. But yeah, so yeah, and then I ended up playing, I don't know, five years of triple yeah, hockey, and met a lot of great people and played against some really good players and stuff like that. A lot of guys that are drafted or playing in NHL or playing college and, and stuff like that. And it's true. Super Bowl scored your second goal yesterday. I know. I saw <laughs> I did see that. And Max, obviously, if you remember your year, Pee Wee, Pee Wee major, you made it. Oh, yeah. to a, that's something you can talk that's about. Probably one of my biggest accomplishments in hockey. It definitely is. That's my number one accomplishment in hockey. How many goalies were at tryouts? Remember? It was like 25 goalies that tried out for the team. So well, like, you haven't even said yet what he was trying out for. That's what I was trying to play. say, but he kept asking leading questions. <laughs> go ahead, so go ahead. I was trying out for the the um, New York Junior Rangers, and it was a U4, a U14 team or U13, whatever Pee Wee Major is. Yeah, Pee Wee Major. And you- so we went to this tryout at the Rangers practice facility in White Plains, and – it was like a gauntlet, these tryouts. I, I I couldn't tell you how many skaters were out there, but I remember vividly getting dressed in a tent outside the rink to, because there's that many kids. They couldn't fit them in the locker rooms. You get out on the ice and you're in the net for like very sh- limited amount of time because there's so many goalies on the ice. But yeah, I, I ended up making it through to through the first round of cuts. And... What's it called? I was in the lower bracket. There was two groups, and one was, like, the kids who were, like, probably going to make the team. And then there was another group of kids that they were looking at further. And I was in that group. And um, I did one tryout in that group and ended up getting called up to the to the other group with the kids who were more likely to make the team and ended up making it through there. I, I just remember doing – doing all the off ice stuff outside and doing all this running and stuff. And and there's just a horde of kids out there. Just so many people. And honest, and I, I literally, I mean, I didn't, I didn't play very much for that team. I I, I warmed up the bench for the teammate for my teammates, but I, I was behind Spencer Knight. Who's currently, I mean, in East Coast League right now, but no, no, East Coast, but he's in the AHL. But Max, you are you played a lot. You didn't play the game at the Quebec uh, but you did play the game. The, I, I played like the played Thunderbirds, the and we also yeah. played at Yankee Stadium. Yeah. Where I didn't play that well because I was really nervous, and we ended up tying instead of winning. <laughs> yeah. But they called a penalty shot on purpose. Yeah. The ref, it was not a penalty shot, but they gave the penalty shot to yeah. do it's all right. We, we went to the Rangers. Fun. You got yeah. called out on the ice during uh during an actual game. Yeah, yeah. During, we got presented on the ice at a Rangers game. We we were I'm pretty sure we had like a box up there. Or yeah, you had a sky box, and mommy and I were like in the nosebleed. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So the, my, yeah, that's awesome. And you know? that's a great experience. And from there, what yeah, after that after Bantam, what you after the Bantam years, you went to uh what did you do, yeah. do man? Um, after that, I ended up going to uh, do one year at South Windsor High School after applying to what, Bunch. 12, 11 different schools, yeah. um, boarding schools. My 
go going into my fresh was it no going into my sophomore year and um because typically you go and you do one year and do your band and major year as a freshman and then you yep. repeat freshman year because you're technically allowed to play for five seasons yeah and then you go in there so you're a little bit older but i didn't end up i got waitlisted at a couple and then just got denied and i'm not going to get into the thick of all that but Ended up playing a year at South Windsor High where I really reconnected with those friends that I made when I was a kid playing in South Windsor because it's they're all my age. It's all the same people. And it really got me tight with those kids again because it was not a good breakup when I was younger leaving South Windsor. It's but, always um, that. It didn't change, Max. No, so I, no yeah. Same thing. So. But, um, and then from there. One of my favorite oh, years. Tell them about your, your final game there. One, we were talking about my time at South Windsor High School and how important it was really to get reconnected with those people and just really, I I really found love for hockey again playing at South Windsor because it, not that it wasn't competitive hockey, but I it was managed expectations because everyone just really just wanted to have fun and play with their friends and stuff like that. It was a as Zoe was talking about before. It's a, a different kind of success story. Obviously, it's competitive and stuff like that, but it's it it really got me into just being there and having fun. And I played s- some of my best hockey there, I, I think. And I can, Max, so can into our playoff can, run that we had. What were you saying? Can I say something on that? Because I yeah. just say that the thing is, don't forget when you left South Windsor to go play for the Wolfpack. How many from kids from South Windsor were playing under, for the Wolfpack? Zero. Exactly. It was just you. So was was it a big adjustment for you? I mean, it's hard talking back on it right now. Yeah. Um. But adjustment, I, right? It is an adjustment That's- for sure. I couldn't tell you if it was tough or not. I would. I. I don't see why okay. it wouldn't be a difficult adjustment. Looking back okay. on it, but like, I'm at least like with school stuff, like. I figured out ways to get stuff done and yep. I, I did did my best to remain connected to the friends I did I did have at South Wales. Right. Yeah. Um back to their game though. Yeah. <laughs> Just like talked about but that. If I can also add to that time period, Zoe also left South Windsor hockey around the same time. Yes, you're right. And so as a family, that was we uh it was a big adjustment for the whole family. We ruffled a lot of local feathers. Um, and we love those people. Instead of people being happy and proud for you because you've made it to the next level of hockey, no, they they shun you and shame you and ostracize you. So we actually, for some time period, lost a lot of good friends during that process. But now we're back friends with them, and um, we're very happy about that. You know that life is like that. You know, sucks, and but we do our be- what's best for our kids. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's the only thing. So, but go ahead, Max. But yeah, um, we had a we went into playoffs that year. I'm pretty sure they took 16 teams in our division, and I don't think there's many more teams than 16 in our division. So pretty much everyone made playoffs. And um, we were the ninth seed. So our, our first game, we ended up playing the eighth seed. I I was in North Branford or something like yeah. that. I don't really remember. But we ended up beating them like eight to two. We, we spanked those kids. And then <laughs> the next game, we had to play the winner of the one seed versus the 16 seed. And you can imagine who won that one. So we're going up against East Haven in the next round of playoffs. At the same rink we played the last game at, and that was, which was at Northford, which was supposed to be a, a neutral site. And it wasn't very neutral. It was pretty much right next to East Haven. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so, yeah, we they had on their team a kid who I had played AAA with for two years, maybe. I yeah, think. two years. I, I wasn't, wasn't very long because he wasn't there at the start. And... um. We and he had like set the goal scoring record or or something. It, it was some crazy stats that he had that year. We ended up winning one nothing on a big shutout. 
but I wouldn't say I did everything. It was a team win for sure on that one. Like guys blocking shots, guys that you would never think would be diving to block shots are the ones diving to block shots. What's up, Z? Was Jake one of them? Yeah, Jake was on my team. Yeah. So was was Matt McCluskey or something? No, I don't know his name. Jack, his younger brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was on my team, but yes, and then we ended up going to making the the final four, making the semis of of that tournament. Ended up losing to two of my two kids I played triple A with when I was when I was younger for like five <laughs> years. So, but. I'm not mad. That was a great experience. And although we, we ended up losing, it was really cool to have like our whole school at Yale, like yeah. for us. Which and was your school different. hadn't made it that far in a long and time, that Rick, if I remember correctly. And that Rick was packed. It was well, packed. that's what I mean. The South Windsor sent buses of kids to go to that. Yeah. And, and the game before that, where we upset the one seed, no one was there. East Haven had this big fan section like USA colors screaming in my ear the whole game and they ended they ended up walking with the tails between their legs home. But the I, news was there. I remember you being uh Oh yeah, I did get a little TV. interview after the fact. <laughs> uh, Ron, I would I'm, love to see that today. You can probably you know, find it. And Ron then was like, Max, say this, say that, don't be careful. We <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, was, that was cool. That game. I was in the stand and all the parents were crying and they couldn't believe we won and stuff <laughs> like that. But that was, that's, that's a great memory for sure that in your, after that, I stopped with her high school. But yeah. after that, so keep going, my, my, my friend. Yeah, and then after that, I ended up applying to three or – I that, applied I'm, to a couple I'm, of I'm, schools. I don't I think that many school. Yeah. Like I like four schools I applied to. Oh yeah, okay. I don't remember that. I thought it was like a couple. It was like it. Berkshire, Cushing, oh, yeah. Winchenden, and then I think somewhere else. Yeah, like, but which, Yeah, Winchenden. They said they didn't need a goalie, really. So I remember that. Whose story is this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm tell you, boy. Mouse ball. <laughs> Go ahead, Max. Sorry. Yeah. So I ended up applying to a couple schools and I I got into both Winchenden and Cushing. Cushing I didn't receive any aid whatsoever. So it would have been what sixty thousand a year to go to that kind of school, which is a pretty penny. And then I got a point, scholarship though. I'll just put that out there. Lucky you. Lucky you. <laughs> oh my gosh. Where it goes then, And then at Winchenden, I received, I received half off on tuition, but like my dad said earlier, they they weren't in need of a goalie at that moment in time, and it, so I ended up going for a tour at Cushing, and their head coach, who wasn't coaching that year, but was coming to coach them the following season that I was applying to the school for, he sat us down in the dining hall, me and my parents. And they're like, we really need a goalie, and we could really use you next year. And we were like, well, Winchenden gave us half price. Could you guys help us out here? And I don't. There was not much pushback. I don't think. I don't know what no, you guys remember from that. It's all Rob Max. Was it Rob? I, 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 don't, I, I don't remember. Yeah, Rob Gangnan. I talked. Rob Gangnan went. He said because he was losing his job as head coach, and he he told them, "You need to take him." He, and they took you. They got the money for you. It's exactly yeah. what happened. So I ended up going to Cushing, and really, that was probably one of the best hockey teams I ever played for. Oh my god, I loved it there. Also, John Cena went to that school. Xavier loved it. I loved it. Your picture is still there at the hockey rink. And I can't wait to go to tour with Xavier and look at that picture again. <laughs> <laughs> we were good. Oh my we god, were really good. And you, you know what? I, I kind of just talk about that year you played there. You fit right in as a number two goalie. You every time Sharif was not playing well, or he was hurt. You came in there. You were the best goalie in the world. You were phenomenal. You right? Do you agree with that? Yeah. That, I, 
that game against Northampton? Is that uh -huh. North East, whatever, the Hampton School, whatever? Yeah. You have, whatever. Listen, you're phenomenal, man. That's a, that game I watched on YouTube. And that was the, and so I watched it many times and I enjoy watching it because you're standing up in your head. And then that, that you're, you're the best number two goalie. And I, I know, like you're the Halak of hockey. <laughs> right. That's the what I for the Habs that one year. Yeah, exactly. Where we, we almost got rid of Carey Price. Exactly. Well, you're phenomenal that year. That's, you played great and you carried the team when Sherry got hurt. Yeah. And it, that was a great experience. Too, because just just practicing with those guys all the time, it just makes you better. Playing at a high, at a higher level, higher pace, quicker shots, better stick handling, whatever you whatever else you want to say. It just play against Connor Bedard, dude. He's like a two thousand five birth year. He's four years younger than me. <laughs> <laughs> when I play against Connor Bedard. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think so, buddy. <laughs> he didn't score like a Michigan on you. He doesn't do the Michigan. It's toe drag release. <laughs> toe That's drag right. release. That's all he does. <laughs> but that year you played, even you played for the Senators. Yeah. I, oh, that was a blast. I think. Went to Nationals. Yeah. I Because I was also, I mean, we we split time for the most part for, the, for that team, but I wasn't getting the good games, I wouldn't say, like the tougher yeah. opponents. Can but, I ask you something? Yeah. Did you always feel valued while you were the second goalie, or was it a difficult thing to move through? I don't think it was that difficult for me at that time because I knew what I was getting myself into. Mm -hmm. I knew going into it, like, probably not going to play that much. But it was we, – we were told that the starting goalie was leaving, so I was there for, like, a year, essentially – to just like he was leaving after the like the season I was going into, so I kind of had that expectation, and you never know like you can earn a spot to play. So mm -hmm. I I showed up ready to work every day, and I I got the opportunities like I was I played games, and my first start was not very good. I do remember that. I think it was against like Hebron or something. Yeah. And I got like lit up, and they they pulled me, and I was I was like, oh, but it's nerve wracking because you're playing against in front of all your classmates are coming to the rink because there's not much else to do on campus during the day. You're like, oh, let's go watch the hockey team play, or let's go watch basketball, blah blah blah, whatever. But yeah. yeah, it was very nerve wracking. But once you kind of get over that initial hump of the nerves, it's and yeah, that's it's, just, it's hard to build your confidence going into a new situation like that. I think that's probably one of the most difficult things. Yeah. I don't know if I really answered the question. I kind of went off on a tangent, but no, I think that you and I just had very different experiences when we went to boarding school. Mm -hmm. On the one hand, you were the backup goalie who received a few games. And on the other hand, I spent two years at Cho like working my ass off like you were every single practice playing with very talented people and like never getting a carrot mm -hmm. and like never, never showing me a reason why I should continue working that hard and like never feeling like I truly had a place um, besides opening the door on the bed. Well, that's, that, that was that due must to some unfortunate circumstances. You were yeah. meant to be, on your way to be a starting goalie and not long after you started your first season there with the coach that had recruited you through having seen you at team Connecticut, you got mono and that kind of took you out for your first season. And then the next unfortunate thing is the coach that brought you there left the school and a new coach came in and she went in another direction and she wasn't very forthright with us. And we had to learn through other means that she was bringing in another goalie to take the spot that had been promised to you. So that was, that was a hard thing to go through as a family and especially for you, Zoe. Yeah. I mean, imagine 15 years old, having dedicated your entire life to this thing that you left your hometown for to realize you've been working so hard and no one had the 
well that coach did not have the decency to say it to your face and instead your goalie partner who had known for the past few months finally had the heart right at the end of your sophomore year to come tell you before you left for the summer and like I was miserable that whole year anyways because I worked so damn hard every day you're better never to never see a minute of ice I know she couldn't let you play because then she wouldn't have been able to bring in her person yeah because there would have been no reason for it because you were of the right caliber to play there. And one of well, your- I will always highlight what yeah, you say. Yeah, the story when you went to go play them again. Oh, yeah. That was amazing. Oh, my God. As are we? Twice. Yeah. Twice. Yes. Well, I so think I tried if, if I can bring you back to after Zoe, well, we're getting off of Max's story and we're back on Zoe's, but. After Zoe found out that they were bringing in another goalie to take her spot, we had just signed her contract with Choate to return for our third year with them. I say we because it's a family decision. Yeah. Um, we were livid because no way would we have signed a contract if there was an expectation that she wasn't going to be playing. So we went to them quite upset I don't remember his name. Yeah. Um, but in my opinion, he handled it very well, very professionally. He said, We will find you another place to play. And now this was at this basically we're going into summertime at this point. I, I remember. And I said, Well, it's all fine and dandy that you find another place for her to play but we're not going to pay more than what we're paying at Choate. And they had given Zoe a pretty attractive scholarship or, or financial aid, whatever you want to call it to be able to go play there. And true to his word, about a week before school yeah. started in the fall, they found her spot. NMH had lost their goalie. They were in need of a goalie. We went there, we checked out the school and you know what? People say that things happen for a reason. And sometimes, you know, I, I honestly believe that because that was a much better fit for Zoe as a person, for us as a family. Um, and I think she started to really flourish at that school. Yeah. I, I enjoyed that place too. That's very, very nice. So I'm glad that it worked out good. So Max wanted to but, yeah, but but Mac, back to Max and working playing with the Senators that year with Cushing that year, going to nationals, playing against another Connecticut team in the top. Are you, are you the top tell the two? No, go uh, for it. That, <laughs> Trying to bring us back to where we left off. Oh yeah. So speaking of mono, the starting goalie for my split season team, which was the one going to nationals got mono like i think a week before or like right around the time we were about to be going to nationals and um so he was unfit to play he could not play he was too sick and um so now i sit down with the coach and they're like we have faith in you like like if we didn't have faith in you we wouldn't even be going to the tournament because i think we got like a bid I'm not entirely sure how that works, but I don't know if there's a yes or no thing that you could have done. But even then, he, the head the head coach of that team was talking to me. He's like, he's like, like we we wouldn't we wouldn't go there if we didn't think we could win. So yeah, we ended up going to nationals, which was in I believe Pennsylvania. Um, sorry if you can hear noise in the background, but um, what's it called? Was it Ohio or Pennsylvania? It was Pennsylvania. Ohio was like was when I was younger. Okay. There you go. There's a picture. My friends are screaming right now, so I Okay. <laughs> but yeah. Um, what's it called? Yeah, we ended up we went to the tournament. I I don't remember how all the games went, but we ended up making it out of a group. <laughs> I'm guessing there was a group. You beat Carver. Oh, dude, that was going to – that was after we were in the group. 
Oh, okay, okay, sorry. That Go was ahead. like an elimination game. Oh, okay, I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, we played against teams like Shattuck. Like, um, who else was there? I mean, you said Culver. And that South Kent. Yale Bulldogs. Yeah. And there, there was a bunch of very good teams and a lot of very talented players. And I was playing up too. I was playing U eighteen as a sixteen year old. Right. But I could have been playing U sixteen that year still. I am you and Sharif. You and Sharif. Sixteen years old. We were both there. Yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. You guys were playing up. Yeah. So that's great. Ended up. We ended up. So, just to add to that, you guys had two goalies. One goalie was unable to go because he was sick. So that put Max as the starting goalie. And we were able to bring a backup with us, but the backup was not allowed to set foot on the ice and play unless Max got injured. So that meant Max had to play every single game while we were there. And yeah, so I we played, I think that biggest game of that tournament for us was definitely beating Culver. Oh my god, I was oh. and their goals are just like what am I supposed to, what am I doing here? <laughs> I was like, all right. But um I, I just remember the video that you took watching the live stream at home and you were freaking screaming. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. That team great. Um, well yeah, I and then we ended up getting like smoked. In the semifinals against my good friend Jake Valu. and <laughs> but it has a different. And those same like Salt Camp, right now they're Salt Camp. They all play together the whole year. Yeah. You guys, team from uh, Winchenden, the Cushing, and so. But it's not. I, I don't find a reason. But no, no, you guys don't. But it's a little different. You know what I'm saying yeah, for sure. And then but, yeah, we ended up losing that one. But then, I'm not exa- exactly sure how everything happened in the off season there. Yeah. But we got word that Joe was staying at Cushing for another season and not going to juniors. And I was like, I'm not spending another year being a backup goalie. You know what I mean? It's it's a waste of my time, and I really just want to play. Well, you know what I mean? And you had just proven yourself, you know, coming yeah. out of Nationals so that you were of caliber to be able to be the lead somewhere. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, um, Winchenden kept their offer from the year before. I, I, and I now think they like, needed somebody. <laughs> and now their goalies had graduated. They're like, yeah, we need a guy. And it was a change of head coach, and he they wanted me there. So I ended up going there to be like a 1A, 1B with the senior goalie that they had. And and to be completely honest, I looking back on it, I definitely liked Cushing more. Mm-hmm. I mean, the facilities were just better, and I mean, I made a lot of really good friends when I was there, and I kind of lost touch with them because it's not easy. Like, like I gotta like when I'm thinking about it, the amount of friends that I have, like I'm very fortunate for all the people that I I have, like I can consider a good friend. But it's not easy to keep in touch with everyone. Everyone goes their own path. So I kind of <laughs> lost touch with some kids that I honestly would wish that I was still friends with. But but I mean, it is what it is. Shane or Sean, whatever his name Shane, is. Yeah. He was a good yeah, That was a like guy closer. Yeah, no, we hung out all the time. Remember, you had, you had Winch and we'll drive to Cushing because we can't go and hang out. <laughs> I, I, I think I did it like once or twice. Yeah. I remember going with you and mommy and Xavier. Yeah. Xavier was drunk, and we just you were hanging out with your buddies, and us were just like we love Cushing too. You know, I we enjoyed. And I'm not saying I didn't like Winch, and I just Cushing was fun, and I and I enjoyed it there. So is but, it my turn now? No, <laughs> but, but it's a good. Right? Don't forget when you play for Cushing, at the end of the season, you played the last three four games because Sharif was hurt. And we won all those four games just because of that. We made it to the elite eight. Yeah. And now they were debating who was going to be the starter for that game because Sharif was not under. I don't think Sharif was hundred percent. And you played well enough, very well. So you I, and the coach told you. I remember that he said, 
and he deserved to play too. Now he was like, he, they they almost said after the game, you should have played the game. That's yeah, yeah. yeah. But we lost, lost the lost, lost we, the Rivers. Uh, yeah. So yeah. So, but that was a great game. It was packed house. It was. I went to the game. It was it was great, you know. But so, yeah. If I can add that, don't forget, you know, this is a hockey podcast today. But the kids were playing other sports also. Yeah, yeah. Max we'll just played talk. soccer. Max played lacrosse. Zoe played soccer. Zoe played JV, JV two soccer. That doesn't lacrosse count. Lacrosse as well, right? Right, Zoe. Uh for a bit. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so yeah, but well, how much more does Max has to go because Xavier wants to say his time and then he needs to go to bed? Well, yeah, I mean, I ended up going to Winchenden where I had a lot, a lot of good times. I mean, it was a completely different program though, to like culture wise, and that was a bit of a, a shock to me. Not that it wasn't serious, but I just feel like we didn't have like the, the right direction that we were going in and it was yeah. pretty difficult to deal with, especially that junior year. Cause we were not very good. Yeah. And then, which was completely different from what I had experienced at Cushing where we were yeah. one of the top teams in all of prep school, all of boarding schools. Yeah. The elite eight. And not that I expected to do that, but like, I just want to be competitive <laughs> and yeah. not get, my see, watch my defenseman get burnt in front of me every game, <laughs> but you got Xavier. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> ended up finishing out at Winchenden my last two years of of high school, and um, made the decision that I didn't really think I wanted to just keep doing hockey. Not that I didn't want to play, I just didn't think following like the route of juniors to division one was really the route for me because I'm all, I, I think I'm a pretty smart kid and I felt like I was wasting my potential academically and my entire future if I continue yep. following hockey because not that I I don't think I wasn't good enough to go down that route it's just the amount of time you got to sink into that well, I'm going to be going into freshman year of college at like 21 years old. Like, yeah. I'm 22 now and I'm about to graduate my undergraduate. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's a, a big difference in where you are in your life if you take that route. And I'm very fortunate for the way I went. I'm, I had, I, I've been playing club hockey here at UConn, which has been, I mean, it has, has its ups and downs for sure. There's points where I wasn't sure if I wanted to keep playing anymore. Mm -hmm. But, like, in the end, I met a lot of really good guys, and I feel bad, like, if I would just, to, like, leave them, too. Because I feel like we've been, especially now, I didn't have my freshman year because of COVID. But, like, I've been with, playing with these kids for three years now, for most of them, or two years yeah. for others. But, like, it's been a while. We go to the rink twice a week go on the play on the weekends and stuff like that. But yeah, we're doing a lot better this year. We're 12 and four after going into December break. Hey, Xavier. Yeah. It's fair. Xavier, my charger upstairs. Well, I was giving now it's Xavier's time I, to talk. I, go ahead. Go ahead. But yeah, if I, if I can just add Max, I thought um, it was an interesting decision when you got out of high school, because you did have another option besides you kind Hockey, club oh, hockey. Yeah. I mean, I had, I had D3 schools that were interested for sure. And we definitely went down that route and poured a bunch of, um, what is it? NESCAC? Is it NESCAC? NESCAC? Yeah. yeah. And um, I just, I mean, I didn't really, I just knew in the back of my mind how much money I'd have to spend to go to a school like that. Yeah. But I'd rather spend, I don't know, fifteen thousand at UConn or sixty, seventy thousand to go to a NESCAC school. And mm -hmm. I'm not knocking anyone for doing that, but I just it didn't there seem was like, not a great return on investment for you. Not at all. Cause in the end, like if I'm paying sixty thousand dollars to play division one hockey, that's a bit of a different different thought, I guess. But even then, like that's still a lot of lot of freaking money in student loans. <laughs> But yeah, you did the right decision, and I think Zoe did too. So, 
Max, uh, and now with you, are your hockey career going and maybe play next year, maybe another year, we'll see what's going to happen with that. Um, all the decisions you guys made were, were right. So it feels that we're still playing. She loves the game. She enjoys it. And it's all about that. So now, um, thank you, Max, for uh, stuff like that. We, we could talk We could talk more about it. There's so much about our hockey stuff. But we're just doing something tonight to see what's going on with that. And, and um, uh, Xavier, Xavier, do you want to talk a little bit no. about your hockey? Aki career. You've lost him now. It's too late. He's tired. All right. Okay. I just wanted to kind of bring it back to the to what Zoe said because I really think that was like a good comment that she made talking about success and how you measure your success, especially in hockey, where everyone's measuring each other. You're measuring against like your teammates and kids on other teams you're playing against, and you you want to win, and everyone's telling you you have to win, and you have to play up to this level. And I really think just like as you mature and get older, you kind of recognize like, is, is this really worth like all the sweat and tears? Mm -hmm. I obviously I'm very fortunate and very happy for the route I took, but like you also got to realize you want to live a normal life, like a normal kid, you know what Mm -hmm. I mean? Hockey kid is not a normal kid in my opinion. I agree. They, they miss out on a lot of stuff like sleepovers and exactly. friends' birthday parties and play dates. And I agree. And I totally I think, agree with that. I totally agree. To keep in perspective as um, you go through it with your third kid, I would say mm-hmm. oh. the path I did, where, you know, it opened our eyes to you know the idea of boarding school and like is an SCAC school really great or are you gonna kind of dump money into it and not really see that return on investment or maybe not even play or maybe go route where you go to boarding school and go play club hockey after or maybe you just like play hockey play soccer you have more fun with it and don't put as much of that high pressure um since it really at there is one point in every hockey player's career where they have to make the choice of hockey or everything else yeah yeah hockey, and, hockey yeah hockey or life as Xavier said it <laughs> what, what did you say hockey or life <laughs> yeah and i mean <laughs> I picked hockey and I look back on some of the decisions I made and obviously I am where I am. And I think a lot of heartache um, by maybe choosing life in some instances. So. Yes. We're done in two seconds, Xavier. (laughs) See that? See? There. Xavier, do you have anything to say? He doesn't. It's okay. He wants to go to bed. And go, he can go upstairs. But um, just say we're after, timed out. Go, we're timing go, out. Dan. I know. Sure. You you've been uh, on almost an hour together. Just talk about a little bit about us about hockey stuff. There's so much yeah. we can talk about. Yeah. So I hope that uh, you do. guys enjoy talking about that and and we can keep going and see what we could do. And it was very fun to listen to all of you and perspect uh, your thing, the thing you were talking about. I enjoy because not rarely we're going to sit down and talk about stuff like that, like a four of us. Like, we do, but that the way we did it tonight was awesome. So, so that's yeah, good. Anything? Thank you everyone for uh, listening to us for tonight. Um, catch us next time on the Cowit Circus. The Carrot Circus Show. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I love you. Oh, like, oh, it's a balloon. <laughs> love you, guys. <laughs>